Hello and welcome to Off My Shelves and this is a one-off episode looking at how I purchase books online so we'll get underway. One of the most frequently asked questions I seem to get in the comments is where do I buy my books from and that type of thing. So I thought it would be handy to have a video showcasing my process and maybe highlighting some websites that I use. I pretty much do all my book buying online because I'm in an area that doesn't have a good comic shop or graphic novel shop right on my doorstep. There is a comic book shop locally but they do mainly floppy issues and older issues and they never seem to stock many of the things I like and I like to browse. As with all these websites and stuff I'll talk about I'll leave a link in the description below to different websites I use. I should say as well this video is going to be quite UK specific because obviously I'm based in the UK and I buy from the UK market or places that subsidise the UK market in some way and so it is very much a UK book buying guide really. Apologies for that, I can't really do much about that at all. So the book market online is kind of split into two. You've got a direct market which are your comic book shops, you know, you've got your Forbidden Planets, you read comics, all that type of thing. And then the other side is you've got your book market which are, you know, Waterstones, Amazon, all of them over there. And you get two different experiences with the both. But then you've got a third option, which is second-hand books and other things like that. So we're going to try to tackle those three broad subjects and how I kind of buy from those three markets. And so first and foremost, second-hand books. Ultimately, a lot of people are intimidated, I think, or don't naturally go to second-hand books because they've maybe had bad experiences or, or things like that. But ultimately, rebuying books that have been used minimally is a brilliant way to get out to print books and cheaper books that are still in print to be honest and I regularly get second hand books that are ex library copies all that type of thing obviously if you're looking for a pristine new copy and this isn't an option for you the places that I naturally go to for second hand books are places like eBay and A books. Now they are the two that I have found myself using more often than not for second hand used books and that's mainly because you get such a broad range of books on there. And don't get me wrong there are tons of second hand book sites out there but those are the two that I naturally go to most. A books has a really wide range of sellers and a mental wide range of prices but sometimes they are the only place that I can find A book that I'm after. But then alternatively, eBay is fantastic as well. And both do great uh, notifications. So if you can save a uh, search, they'll notify you if those searches are uploaded. So I would really recommend that if you are after a hard to get book, that you save your searches and that you kind of keep an eye on those sites regularly and you should find it sooner rather than later. The problem being obviously, the price range is insane. You know, you couldn't get anything from a £10 book being advertised at like £100 and it not being worth it at all. So definitely look at the retail price and look at the rarity of the book and all that and decide for yourself. Ultimately, you will be the person who has to be happy with that purchase. So if you think you've spent the right amount, then that's fine. If you think you've spent too much, then obviously don't buy it. Or if you think it's too much rather than don't buy it. And the third place I often find myself getting second-hand books from is on Facebook and Instagram groups. Now, this hasn't got the buyer protection that perhaps um, an eBay or an e-book sale would have because obviously you're buying off a seller and the website is covering some of those costs and the seller has got certain duties that they got to fulfill but on Facebook and Instagram sites you have to know to trust the reputation of a seller so certainly ask questions, get lots of photos, make sure you are comfortable more than anything and wherever possible use the goods and services as, as a PayPal payment so some of the payment is covered even though you might be tempted to use friends and family and save yourself a pound or two don't do that do goods and services because at least you're covered for some of the cost if the sale does go barely up or if it doesn't turn up all that type of thing now I bought and sold many books over Facebook and Instagram but I only buy books where I can see that the seller has got a few sales behind them they know what they're doing and they're good at communicating good at giving you information you can tell I think broadly that a seller is going to be a good seller but ultimately it's not an exact science so it is what it is really. That's all I've got to say about second hand books. We'll go on to the general direct market for Britain now. Now, 
online on the direct market in Britain there's not that many options I would say at least in Britain because a lot of the comic book sites haven't necessarily got their own dedicated site and if they have normally it's a lot of floppies rather than collective editions and obviously on this channel we concentrate pretty much on collected editions really and so the majority of the comic book shops and the direct market shops have their shop fronts on eBay themselves. Take my favourite, A Place in Space, which is a comic book shop down in Croydon, London, I think. And they are amazing. They're great customer service, great products, and I bought collected editions and floppies from them, and they are great on every level, I think. But there are a ton of different ones that I've used that are really really good traveling man are a great site i bought my black mirror absolute version from them and it came super duper fast and super well packaged another another great shop that get exclusives as well and that's another thing that adds to the confusion of all this is the direct market often get extra exclusive to incentivize people to use the direct market shop so ok comics which is a leeds based comic book shop is a key example of that i haven't used them myself yet so i can't speak too much about them because i don't know about their packaging and all that type of thing but they certainly are one of these shops that get exclusive prints as does pin planet and things like that and so they extra added incentives but again along with the prints and stuff like that you will get you know really immaculate posters and packaging with the direct market but the cost will be higher than other general booksellers which we'll get more into in a bit now and then there's the two big ones the forbidden planet and read comics in britain now forbidden planet is well known and they are just you know your standard cornerstone really of the direct market in britain sometimes they pre-orders and book take time to ship and they do charge shipping so when you're looking at the price always factor that in and i think that's pretty much across the board with the direct market apart from certain ebay sales and things like that and read comics they're still really solid and a great way to kind of get access to the direct market like they are really the mainstays i would say obviously there are others and i've no doubt that other people will put theirs but they are the ones i use more often than not really to be fair but then we get into the big one then the one i use pretty much exclusively really apart from like a few sales really the majority of the books that i have come from the book market obviously amazon amazon is just a solidly good place to start really as much as i love supporting local sellers and local kind of shop owners and things like that it is a difficult thing not to use when the pricing and the postage and everything is so low the major thing obviously is packaging but we're going to get to packaging at the end there are naturally loads of book sites out there literally thousands as we've probably established by now and then there's obviously book, uh, book sites like um, best book price uk and loads of other things like that that you can search generally a load of different book sites but they don't always have every book site on their site so they're good to have a general look but then you know that you are missing some out so you have to go and look physically and so after years and years and years of doing this of looking at literally like 10 to 20 different book sites every time a book comes out i've kind of narrowed my sites down to around about four or five websites that i use fairly regularly and that they are the ones that i kind of trust and have faith in and so they are the ones that i'm going to talk about mainly four i use generally are blackwell's books books please books etc and speedyhen.com now those are the four i use now 100 percent people are going to watch this and someone is going to have a bad experience of those four and i'm not saying they're the best and i'm not saying they're the best of the best by any stretch of imagination but they are the most consistent in getting books that i want in stock in giving competitive pricing in giving free posters and packaging and giving extra kind of you know discounts and incentives and things like that what i'm going to do because i think it's easiest to showcase these book sites and the process of going through it it's just ordering books because i want to order some books anyway so i'm going to try and order a book from each of the four ones that i normally do 
and then basically we are going to look at the portions of packaging as it comes in and the time of delivery and all that type of thing so I'm going to order four books and this video is going to be edited all over the place because I don't know when they're going to come but when they come in I'll show you the first, second, third and fourth show you the packaging, show you the quality of the book inside and if it survived and all that type of thing so you know generally what to expect if you use any of these four sellers in the UK and I would say outside of the direct market these four sellers are kind of representative of the market overall in terms of postage time, packaging time and costs really. Pretty much 100% of the time for me the direct market comes incredibly well packaged and so if packaging is your main main thing you want to get that book pristine use Forbidden Planet, Read Books, Travelling Man, OK Comics, some comic book shops on eBay and stuff like that but again do your research I'm going to order some books now and then literally I will come back and show you each one as we go and hopefully you'll get a general idea of the packaging and yeah we will get underway with that. So a slight change of plan. Essentially I went off and tried to order the books for packaging examples for all you guys and dispatch time examples for all you guys but I didn't find anything I wanted from books please and then I did find something I wanted from Forbidden Planet and Travelling Man. And so it is a bit of a mix and so we're going to get through the boxes that have come and obviously this is just an example to show you what these companies pack like and what they kind of dispatch times are and things like that. But either way all the books I ordered were listed on websites as in stock. The only website I used uh, specifies a uh, different dispatch date within that was Blackwells and Blackwells essentially they tell you if it's 24 hours, if it's 72, if it's a week or whatever. But most of them just say in stock. And so I ordered books from Speedy Hen, from Blackwells, from Forbidden Planet, Travelling Man, and books, etc. And so the first in was Speedy Hen. And so I'm going to open this. I'm going to put the camera, look into this box so you can see the packaging inside and out as it came. But obviously the one thing to keep in mind is the different size of formats that I buy will naturally have different packaging. So if you order a manga, say, from Speedy N, it's not going to come in a box like this. Unless it's like this manga, which is a big box set version of a manga. But... So keep that in mind really and we will go on the other cam now. But Speedy N certainly was the quickest to dispatch. They use Royal Mail in Britain to dispatch their items. Whereas I think most of the others use Hermes, Yodel and a few others. But either way, Speedy Hen was first up so let's look at the packaging. So Speedy Hen packaging, the box came pretty much intact. No bumps or bruises or anything like that. It does seem like it hasn't got much in the way of packaging inside and as you can see I nearly cut my own book which I have to be careful of with packages like this because as you can see it's just come with a cardboard box around it mind you there is some paper packaging on the sides but either way it's come pretty much spotless really the packaging as you can see is pretty standard just cardboard box packaging and then the book come spotlessly clean which is always good and for those of you that really care I didn't mind get any scratch or mark on my slipcase so I can get on with my day happy now the second package that came in was from Travelling Man and so Speedy Hen came first, Travelling Man came second and it should be said fair play to Speedy Hen as well because I ordered another set of books because I've been a bit obsessive buying books this early January and I they came before all of the other people so I've had two deliveries from Speedy Hen in the time that it's taken the others to get one out which I think is says a lot about Speedy Hen really so Travelling Man was second and they were great they give you lots of information when, when it's dispatched, when it's tracked and all that this did come via Royal Mail, but sometimes Travelling Man use DPD, I think it is, and other package handlers with bigger boxes. So again, this isn't reflective of all their packaging, it's just an example of one of them. So let's have a closer look. So all the Travelling Man package came pretty much unscathed in the post, thankfully. And so we'll go and delete this as 
Open that, and these are two volumes of Naoki Urasawa's latest book, Asadora, and they come nice and tightly packaged in there. So that is the packaging that you got, which again, done fine by these books, come with no issues whatsoever, as far as I can see. No issues at all. So yeah, that's Traveling Man's package. Well, the postman caught me just as I was about to go out for a run, so I thought I'd get this out of the way quick. Blackwell's books was the next in. Blackwell's is one of the ones that basically they don't dispatch all at the same time. They dispatch whenever the book comes available. So I should say that with Traveling Man and with Speedy Hen, when I ordered the books from them, I got them all in one go. But Blackwell's, I am actually still missing one book, so there's still one book outstanding. So it's not necessarily a completed order. And they use Hermes, I think, to deliver rather than uh, Royal Mail in Britain, anyway. And yeah, and they've come in two separate packages. Weirdly, they are two manga books, really, but two very different styles of packaging. Obviously, it's because of the size difference of the manga itself. But either way, one thing I'm noticing more than anything in doing this packaging thing, because obviously doing this video I'm paying more attention to packaging than I've ever done before. But the one thing I am noticing is earlier on in this video I said about the direct market and comic book shops and things like that having substantially better packaging. But it's not necessarily the case. It really is dependent massively on the format of the book you order. So if, for example, you just order a standard manga or a standard trade paperback from Amazon or a comic book shop, the quality of packaging you're getting is not that different, even though you will probably end up paying for packaging on one over the other. Uh, it's, there's slight differences in thickness of the cardboard envelope and things like that, but they pretty much still use the same postal services and pack it without external packaging, you know, bubble wrap and things around it. The packaging only changes really with the larger books so with the omnibuses and things like that so as an example i just opened traveling man's package but later on that day via dbh or dbd or whatever it is they sent another package but i ordered a bigger book and i'll show you pictures because i didn't get a chance to film it but essentially that was packed in a larger box with lots of packing peanuts the ones that melt in water and all that and with bubble wrap around the book as well and so totally and utterly different but then the same volumes that i had of that because i had another set of volumes they were big titan editions of um, um attack of titan colossal editions rather and i had two books of the same series from speedy hen as well and when they came they were packed in a large box with packing paper around it as well but without the bubble wrap and so the only major difference i'm seeing in packaging at the moment is with larger books so if you order like larger hardbacks larger format manga you know bigger books more expensive books then generally the packaging seems better with comic book shops but outside of that there is really a uniformity with packaging these days it's not as bad as the old days where i remember well where they would just give you a jiffy bag with everything some of the worst sellers everyone seems to have fairly sturdy cardboard packaging and so yeah there's a bit more uniformity across the board now looking at it really but anyway i'll look at these books quickly and get on with my run so these are the blackwell packages as you can see this one is quite a thick cardboard box this one is more your standard kind of thin cardboard envelope really now there is a different size in the manga but they were both made in the same order but they both come separate and like i say there's a third outstanding so the order isn't fully complete but this one is another issue of Asadora by Niyoki Urasawa and yeah and like I say the packaging is fairly flimsy nothing majorly different from what you would get from Amazon really the only thing I will say is now and again you normally get this type of envelope from Amazon more than anyone else even with slightly larger books sometimes but more often than not from Blackwell's you will get this and well we'll see here when the third version of this comes through when the third package because most of the things I've ordered from Blackwell's do come in this thicker cardboard which I prefer massively because it protects the ends of it more 
and it does wrap around a bit more. Get that out. And volume three of Monster by Naoki Urasawa. So obviously I'm on a manga and Urasawa kick. But yeah, you can see there, cardboard flaps, good packaging in general. Well, you wouldn't believe this. After the last time I recorded and I went off on one about how single volumes and manga are all kind of standardised packaging no matter where you get them from, Forbidden Planet go and do this. <laughs> so Forbidden Planet the next in, so Speedy Hen first, Travelling Man, Blackwell's Forbidden Planet, but I should say Forbidden Planet might be my fault slightly because I buggered up my car details a little bit. So in fairness it would have been here before Blackwell's I think but there was a delay on the payment due to my fault. But either way, most annoyingly, this is just one volume of manga in a very sturdy box with extra packaging. So this might buck my theory that I came up with in the last episode. But either way, it still kind of holds true that the best quality of packaging you're going to get are more kind of comic book shops that deal with comic books and collected editions day in, day out. You know, like Travelling Man who deal with manga and collected editions like Forbidden Planet. And the other bookstores just generally treat all of the comics and collected editions as they would do any other box really and so yeah but we'll get into this packaging have a look but certainly forbidden planet have shot my theory of single volume mangas being a standardized packing and you know trade paperbacks being standard because if this is how they pack a single volume of manga wow fair play to them <laughs> before we look get it open so yeah as you can see the box is a pretty sturdy box Feels like it's extra packaging in there, so I will get it open and have a look at how they packaged this very small book in such a big box and made me look a fool because I say one thing and then another thing happens and uh, like as a non-professional professional. Anyway. Lots of packaging, loads of packaging, loads of paper. Inside, another load of paper. So, literally, as you can see, super good packaging. And then, in more packaging here. And I think Forbidden Planet must have known that I was doing a video looking at packaging in Britain. And <laughs> They've gone all out basically because. What? <laughs> okay, now this, this. I don't know if this is normal, but either way, Forbidden Planet is definitely up there for me. So there you go. One volume of Monster by Naoki Urasawa. I'm trying to get all nine of these, but five and nine are proving to be annoyingly difficult. But either way, that's Forbidden Planet Parking. They are definitely on top right now. This video better be of use to at least one person out there because I am sick of putting the camera down and setting it back up every time a package comes. But either way, we have got a package next in from Books Etc. So we had Speedy Hen, Travelling Man, Blackwell's Forbidden Planet, Books Etc. So yeah, this is the last one. Yay! We reached the end. So yeah. I'm going to be opening this on camera now. It is a hefty big old box and so I'll show you everything. So yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty hefty old box really. But we will get into it. And I should say that this took the longest to come but was generally the biggest discounted box. So again, with books etc, you normally will get heavy discounts. I normally get quite quick shipping in fairness, but again, the time I'm doing this video around Christmas time, I think everyone is a bit all over the shop, so it may well have been slightly faster, but either way, it came in last, but it is heftily packaged. When you move it around like that, the books do feel like they are not that stable inside, but we will check them anyway. Inside, but when we do get inside, you see that books, etc. Do this quite a few times. So within that big box, you've got a smaller cardboard envelope, and this has happened to me a few times when I get a larger edition. Sometimes when you get a smaller one, you'll get 
just this but it's still a pretty hefty you know envelope and again as you see it's pretty standard for what everyone does at the moment in terms of this heavy cardboard envelope i was quite happy to see that we only got one of those thinner cardboard envelopes one from blackwells but that was it really but yeah that's the packing done and yeah two editions of sandman i'm, I'm all in on the sandman deluxe i am basically so yeah but that's that so yeah so they were the packaging examples and so hopefully you've got some idea of the range of packaging from um, people that supply the British market more than anything and like I said I can't really do markets for Europe or America because I don't really buy from those markets really but I'm guessing that the packaging is not going to be drastically different but certainly if Forbidden Planet and Travelling Man are anything to go by the packaging and the tightness of the packaging and the extra bits around them certainly do hold true what I said at the start of this video is that specialist comic book shops and collected edition shops certainly have more care for the packaging not to say the speedy hair blackwells and books etc don't have that care it's just those little extra details that make it worthwhile really in terms of paying for the packaging but certainly I would say that if price is the biggest factor then go into the general book market but then obviously kind of i wouldn't say it's like rolling the dice packaging wise but you do get different experiences the size and scale of the volumes you order and all that type of thing but if pristineness of the book is all that really matters then i would say that it is worth your while to kind of go to the comic book shops you know like forbidden planet traveling man read comics okay comics all those sites and even though you may pay extra post and packaging, maybe extra for the book, you are paying extra because those people know how to pack and will pack carefully. Obviously, that's not going to happen 100% of the time. There will be mistakes made now and again, and people will have different experiences. But generally, that seems to be the way of it, really. But I will leave it at that. It has been an epic video, <laughs> and I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I hope you get something from it. I will leave a link in the description below of all the website links that I've talked about, and a few others that I haven't talked about that may be of use. Certainly copy and paste it or add it to bookmarks or anything like that, if it can help. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.